At some point in D&D, you may find yourself wanting to create your own subclass, or even entirely different rules. And that's kind of the subject of Mike's Happy Fun Hour. It demystifies the process of creating new content for D&D. So, my, yeah, my, the Mike Morales Happy Fun Hour is, uh, it is 1 to 2 on Tuesdays, uh, Pacific Time. And what I do each week is take a game element for 5th for edition D&D, and I design it in front of you. Um, I experiment with the format a little bit. The, usually I start with a blank page. Uh, sometimes I'll start with some notes. One time I just showed off, like, here's a subclass I designed, um, and then just walked through the design of it. So I'm still kind of fi finding, like, what's the best format. But, um, but yeah, so basically if you were ever curious to see, like, what's the thought process behind that first draft of, of material, uh, that's what this hour is meant to show. It's also, frankly, meant to show a lot of failures in that I want to encourage people that, like, I think people have this sense that if you're doing game design professionally, that it just comes easy and you just do it and it's just done. And I, I remember reading about this a few years ago. And if, if, you've, if you're out there, if you've heard of this, it's very common, but not, maybe not everyone's heard of it. This idea of a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And I think a lot of people have a fixed mindset about game design. They just think you're either good at it or you're bad at it. And that's kind of the thing with a fixed mindset is you think that what you are today is just what you are. Like if you're not good at something, well, that's just the way it is. I'm not good at this. A growth mindset is one that says, well, I, I need to work at it to improve. You, you see the path ahead of you rather than, than the destination. So what I'm hoping this does is encourages that more growth mindset amongst people when they think of DMing or homebrewing or even game design, whether just for fun or professionally, and they understand that there's no magic behind game design, that it's not just like, oh, I'm a good game designer, it means I just do good things. Uh, being a good game designer means you do a lot of things some of which are good, most of which are not useful. But it's that, that there's an old story about a, uh, a, a college professor who's teaching a course in pottery, and he divided his students into two groups. One he was told, one group he was told, you'll be graded based on the single best like, piece of pottery you make this term. The other group he's told, you'll be graded based on the volume of pottery you create. Just create as many pots as possible. And what ended up happening was the group that was told to create volume created the best pottery. They not only had a lot of pieces they made, but their best piece was better than the students that just focused on one really good, you know, showing off only their best piece. Uh, because there's real truth in this set of idea, the growth mindset of just keep trying, keep working, keep improving. The more you do something, the better you get at it. Which sounds obvious if you play Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like your character levels up by doing stuff. <laughs> but it's easy in our personal lives to lose sight of that and just think, ah, oh, I just I can't game. I, I I tried writing this thing, it didn't work out. Oh, I'm just bad at this. Well, of course you're bad at it. You haven't done it before. Um, now do it a hundred more times and tell me how you feel about it, right? That's that's the key. It's so so I'm hoping it's encouraging people to see that. So it's always a struggle, right? It's easy. It becomes easy only when you stop challenging yourself. And guess what? When you stop challenging yourself, it doesn't matter whether you've been doing it for a year or 30 years, whether you're just doing stuff for fun or doing stuff professionally. When you stop challenging yourself, you stop creating interesting things and fun things. So it's always going to be hard. I mean, I guess that's the bad news is if you want a creative career, I'm really going to have, sorry to break the news to you, that it is always going to be hard and it is always going to be unfun in a lot of places. Now, the fun for me more than makes up for it. I think my, my natural if resting place is I want to create games. So if I, I remember having this discussion with a friend of mine. You know, you think about someone who's a billionaire. How do you become a billionaire? Like once you're a millionaire, would you have enough money? It's like for a lot of these people, for these, I think if you get to, get to be a billionaire for all, all, everyone in that category, um, unless you inherited the money, um, that's a very different story. But um, your resting place is you want to accumulate more wealth. Right, and it's just, just what they do, right? And so I think it's similar, like that's how you end up making something, I think your career, which otherwise a lot of people, you know, with the, a career with a really the very hard, difficult early point. I mean, game design is very hard early on. It's rare you just step into something really engaging. You often are doing it freelance. Uh, if you're in tabletop, you're doing it freelance and it's not, not a living wage. And if you're doing it professionally, you're probably starting out doing very boring tasks that can be very repetitive. You're doing test, you're doing like very simple design, you're just implementing someone else's design, things like that. Um, but if you just have that, if your resting place is I want to do this, then I think that's how you power through it and skill up. I mean, hopefully you're skilling up, you're not just 
spinning in circles. Um, and then you, that's when you start progressing. But it's gotta be hard. If it's not hard, you're not challenging yourself. If you're not challenging yourself, you're not growing. If you're not growing, you're not getting better. You're not moving forward. You know, you're not actually being genuine with the work. And I think that is very important, that you have to have a genuine, honest relationship with the work. Otherwise, you're fooling yourself and you're fooling your audience. You know, it's all, what's the point? I mean, if you're not furthering the, 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 the conversation that is the art of game design, I guess that's, that's paying a, that's a paycheck, but you can, accountant, you can be an accountant and make a lot more money with a lot less stress. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Merles, for being on the show and, of course, for using handy-dandy D&D Beyond. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.